One of my favorite video game consoles of all times has to be this here, the Nintendo GameCube. It has such an amazing library of games, and you know, it's one of the most Nintendo Nintendo systems ever. The problem with this is that the only way you can really go wireless with your controller is by using a WaveBird. And while it's a great controller, it doesn't rumble, and they're kind of expensive to get complete now. Well, I just got my latest order today from CastlemaniaGames.com, and it has a solution in here we are going to walk you through to show you how to go ahead and install this new controller port board into your system that will allow you to use, check this, Bluetooth controllers with your Nintendo GameCube. So let's go ahead, get this thing rolling because uh, it has parts and pieces and ribbon cables and all sorts of things that looks like it's gonna be fun to install. Let's get started. So here we have our Indigo GameCube on our bench. This is a pretty simple install. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the memory card and we're going to remove any discs that's inside the tray. Next up, we do happen to have our Game Boy Player installed and we are going to remove that. Now, there's a couple ways you can go ahead and do that. You can use just a flat blade screwdriver if you don't have one of those handy. A nickel tends to work pretty well to unscrew that. Now, if your system doesn't have a Game Boy Player installed, obviously you won't need to worry about this step here. All right, with those loosened, we're just gonna remove that right off of there. Now you'll have access to the underside of your system and we'll need to remove the one, two, three, and four security bits that are in here. So there are two different sizes of security bits that Nintendo systems use. It's a 3.8 millimeter, that's the smaller type normally for the cartridges. For the system, it needs this here. This is a 4.5 millimeter, I believe. So we're gonna go ahead and we actually have a Hitachi electric screwdriver that I use. And I always set the clutch fairly loose for this. And I'll just back these out. Now at this point, we're just gonna flip the system over so the screws pop out. And we'll set these aside because we will need these later. Now from here, we'll want to carefully lift off the lid. And then this is actually the part of the system that we're gonna be working on right here. And then that'll just pop straight forward. And we'll need to remove the ribbon cable that goes down below here. Pull right out. So we can set the system aside for now because we're gonna be working just on the face of the system to begin with. So let's take a look at our conversion kit here and everything that it has in it. And again, these are available through castlemaniagames.com. Uh, this was a pre-order type item uh, that they are starting to fulfill. Uh, I will have links down below in a pinned comment where you can pick this up for yourself. So a few things to note on here is, first of all, you can see the face of the unit itself. Now, unlike the original, it actually uses a battery that's removable on here for the clock battery and everything like that. Whereas it is removable in here, we'll show you this in a little bit more detail in a moment, but you have to unsolder and resolder it uh, onto it. Uh, above and beyond that, it has some additional ports on the back here too. It has a, uh, I think that's a pairing button, but let's go ahead and work on getting everything moved over. Now it's just two Phillips head screws to remove the old controller port from the face of the unit. Now you may find it handy to have tweezers just to be able to grab the screws out of place or out of where they're at here. These are popping off nicely. Again, you'll need to recycle those for later. That should, yep, everything just pops right off. So here you can see how the battery is soldered into place on the board itself versus how you know, this one has a battery tray that you can pop it in and out. Uh, this is overall in pretty good shape. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, before you mount this to the faceplate, you do need to install this little arm here. See, on the original one, it's got this little mechanism here. So what you'll do is you'll install this like so. Um, you gotta make sure that this little point is basically perpendicular to the switch button there to make sure that that still has freedom of movement and that screw is tightened all the way down. Note the orientation that the battery goes up and there's that spot and that spot there where everything mounts into place on you. And we will drop our original screws back in here. Now, one thing I like to do 
is drop screws. No, um, one thing I like to do is unscrew the screw slightly and then screw it into the boss. There, it actually dropped right into place. Just a and by doing this, what it ensures is that you're not cutting new screw hole threads, that you're utilizing what's already there in the plastic. That's that one, and then same thing. Pretty simple and straightforward there. Now we do have a couple of connectors that we need to go ahead and get hooked up. Um, we've got some extension cables here, and this one goes in right there like so. The Molex connector is polarized so it only goes in in one direction. And then we've got another connector which goes right to there. Now we are almost ready to go ahead and get it wired up to our system itself. So there with the new board in place it pretty much looks the same as with the stock Nintendo one on here. And one thing I did forget to do is to install the antenna mount here now. I look at this and I kind of chuckle a little bit because this is the same type of connector we used to use in the RC market. So there are many Spectrum RC modules that I've gone ahead and installed antennas just like this onto. There we go. It just snaps right into place. And then the antenna we will just mount on the inside right about there. We'll peel off the the backing tape here. So a couple things here just of note is the fact that I have installed a laser bear uh, fan into this with one of their 3D printed mounts so this might look a little bit different than your unit. Um, where is my cable? So one thing I want to do here too before we get too far is I am going to install the ribbon cable because these are a pain to deal with. There we go. And then we'll push the other side into the, this is called a ZIF connector here. We'll push that in here uh, in just a few minutes. There we go. So you can see how much the blue material is pushed up into the connector to be able to lock it in. We are locked in, give it a tug, and it is good. The fan, I believe, gets connected now into that connector, or is it this connector? All right, so we connect this connector here into the connector on the face. It can only fit in one direction, yes. All right. Now at this point we're going to seal our system back up starting first and foremost with the face of the unit here. Drop it in place. Make sure you're not pinching any wires here. And we go with that. You'll also need to make sure these wires here are routed safely so that they are not in the way and not being uh, not obstructing anything. Back on here. All right, now that we have everything together here, let's get our security bits reinstalled. Now, much like the Phillips head screws, I will unscrew this slightly, let it take a set, and then I'll start to screw it in by hand. And I do these in kind of a cross pattern just to make sure everything is seated properly. Now we can go ahead and tighten her down. Reinstall the Game Boy player and really those don't need to be super tight. Just hold the system the adapter to the system okay. Everything seems to be working as it should notice that your range is going to be a lot smaller on the reset button Than what it was before you're not getting that travel like what this here had which I mean just as long as you're aware of it, I think you'll be fine. Let's hook it up and test it out. So we've got everything connected to our capture card now. One thing of note, if you go ahead and try to power it on and nothing comes on, 
hit the reset button. Mine did not come on right away. Greg actually has a, uh, a tip or an FAQ about that on his website that there's a relay or something that may get reset or needs to be reset out of the box. So one of the things out of the box too, now that you have removed the original memory battery from your system, you've got to reset the system clock and time. So uh, we've actually connected our WaveBird controller here to go ahead and uh, reset our date and time on here and let's see here it is January the 14th 2023 when I'm recording this and the time is 12 or 1 11 18 now is this a 24 hour clock or not it is, so that would be 23.18. There we go. Everything is set properly there. Let's go ahead, we'll put a game in, and we are going to test it just with the wave bird, just to make sure it works normally as it is as a standard GameCube-type controller port. All right, so up first, this is Robotech Battlecry, and again, we are just using our standard wave bird here, and uh, we will just play a little bit of this, see how it goes. Everything's working as it should here. Just need to remember what the button combinations are. All right, so yeah, the WaveBird working exactly as it should. And now the dongle is connected to the system, so uh, that is something of note. So it's not something that you can eliminate the need to use the dongle with. You just basically use the, uh, uh, you know, use it as, as if nothing were different. So let's go ahead and let's now try to connect. One of the things that I want to test out is this is from Retro Fighters, and if you look at the layout, it is a GameCube layout. I want to see if we can pair this with this. Rolling off here with some Metroid Prime, and we do again have the Retro Fighters Duelist here. Um, I do want to see, so there's that. The C-Stick is not doing anything. That's A. That's B. That's X. And that's Y. So interesting that the C stick is not doing anything. That was the R button and the L button. Can't do anything with the uh, C stick. So unfortunate that this does not seem to work with it. Um, I don't know if I change from X input to D input if that would make any difference. But yeah, the, uh, the C stick not doing anything. So I would say as much as I want this to work, not going to do it. Up next, how about an Xbox Series S and X controller with some Mario Kart? Let's see how this performs because, uh, yeah, this could be fun. Rumble does work, which is nice. Analog stick is working. So the triggers do not work. Ah, dang it. So the button mapping definitely a bit different here. There we go. Okay. I can't drift. How do I drift? So that is the R button. Yeah, I am having a hard time on here drifting. You know, it would be one of the nice things on here if you could remap the controls. Yeah, I am not able to do any sort of drifting. But I will be darned if I can figure out how to go ahead and drift. So that was weird, but I mean, everything else worked okay. Just that button mapping was a bit odd. All right, so what if we started playing the uh, GameCube with a PS4 DualShock controller? Let's see how this plays. I'm gonna play a little bit of Rogue Squadron, one of my favorite games for the Nintendo GameCube. And it's amazing because it was a launch title. Now, this is something that I do have to have the volume on the game turned down on this particular one simply because, uh, yeah, I don't want to get a content ID match, and they love to ding this one. Now, to connect, and I haven't mentioned this before, to connect my GameCube uh, to the TV and our capture card and everything, I am actually using a um, my RetroTINK 5X and... Um, Prism component video cables from Retrobit. Button presses and everything are feeling decent. I will say the analog stick feels a little bit on the touchy side compared to the GameCubes. 
That works brilliantly to get into the cockpit view. D-pad working well to assign my, my gunners and everything. Now, the start and select button are actually the share and options button on here, which is pretty important to note. Ooh, now we've got some squads coming in. Got them. Yeah, I just feel like the analog stick is a bit on the sensitive side, but this is working well. We're going to have the wingman go after the ties for now. All right, so the last one we're going to test it out here with is a Wii Mote and Nunchuck. And uh, here's the Nunchuck. Check this out. That's cool. So overall, what are my opinions of this? Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit bummed out that the, uh, you know, not... All the controllers that I tried worked. Uh, the fact that the Retro Fighters Duelist didn't work, that was a bummer. I did also try the Retro Fighters Brawler 64 Bluetooth. That did not work either. Um, but I would say first-line wireless controls from manufacturers themselves, from Sony, from Nintendo, um, working well here. Um, installation was pretty easy. I do wish, like, they've got a great guide showing you how to install the system on their website include that in the packaging with the conversion kit i mean that's that's really something that i would highly recommend um i've also had it pop up a couple of times that it doesn't store the date so uh, i'm going to open the system up again down the road and see if that's something that like did i need to pull out a piece of film or something between the battery and the uh, face of the unit itself just to make it you know make contact there uh, but this is pretty awesome i mean i first and foremost i have to say on the unit that i pulled out of my uh gamecube this one was not always working uh, and I was having some connector port issues, so uh, I'm glad that I'm able to go ahead and replace this with something that works and adds extra functionality. The pairing process is super easy. Just hold down the reset button for, you know, five to eight seconds. It enters pairing mode, and then you can go ahead and hit pairing on your controller itself. Um, range, I'm about mm, eight to ten feet away from the system. No problems whatsoever there. Button mapping may be an issue for you depending on what you're trying to play. The fact that I could not get the power slide to work whatever, the drift to work whatsoever in Mario Kart using the Xbox controller. It was a bit annoying. Um, I'll have to go through and see if there's anything out there as far as what the default button mappings on this are. Um, but we're going to try just a 2D platformer here. Oh, it is not liking what is going on here, so... We're going to go ahead and connect the nunchuck back up and see if that fixes any of these issues. Because you see the levels cycling through. That's exactly it. It wanted the nunchuck. All right. So, all right. So this is where I'm actually using it like uh, a traditional, you know, Wii remote nunchuck. So I wonder here. Yeah, the button mapping is really, really weird. Yeah, the button mapping, so A is jump, but then it's A and 1, basically. And if I disconnect the nunchuck, what happens? Yeah, it's looking for an analog stick, so you have to use it with the Wii Remote and the nunchuck, at least in this. But overall, this is a fun mod to go ahead and install. It really does give you more options for different controllers to use on the Nintendo GameCube. Now, we have actually done a few mods to our GameCube that we have here. Like I mentioned during the disassembly and reassembly process, we actually installed one of Laser Bear's silent fan upgrades to our particular GameCube. If you want to check out that video and more, go ahead and check out that playlist that is up in the upper right hand corner. It has tons of great information on the Nintendo GameCube as far as different controllers, different patch cables, different HDMI adapters, and more.